these guys, I'm going to go fast through it because it's science and um, it reminds me of high school science when you read it. It's really high school science. So, uh, William, how are you, bud? I'm good, thank you. So, I'm going to go fast on the high school science part and then highlight the lightning protection that we're going to do for the building that we have. There's certain things, guys, I want to highlight in terms of the lightning rods that we going to do around the, the, the perimeter of the building. <coughs> the size of the lightning cable that we're going to do around the building, that's important. The size of the ground rod that we put in the ground to ground the lightning system, that's another important thing. So these are what I'm going to highlight. A few things, but the, but the rest of it is high school science. Um, lightning process, how the lightning work. We'll touch on that one and... and, and um, Chris will explain it better than I do. And then what I want to highlight though is protecting building from lighting. That's what I want to highlight. How to place all your lightning rods in the building. And uh, safety rules to avoid getting hit by lightning. You have to consult Minnesota Department of Health and Safety for that one. There's a couple of rules saying, oh, by the way, if it's doing lightning outside, don't go outside. Let go. So that's going to be up to you guys to go there and get hit by lightning. Um, so a couple of things, guys. Um, natural phenomena, destructive. If we can, if you can utilize, Chris, they say a lot of things. If you can utilize the amount of energy that's coming out of this big fat bolt that's hitting the earth, utilize it in terms of storing it, and retrieve it back into being used as electricity. You'll be the the richest man on earth. There's a huge amount of energy discharges discharge into earth. If you can utilize this in terms of storing it somewhere. Reusing it as a power, electrical power, you can be very rich. The problem is right now we're looking at destructive. They go, what they do is they hit your building, they burn a lot of electrical equipment, big chunk of, of, of block goes all over when you get hit and so forth. And you guys saw a couple of really nice, nice pictures from Thompson Lightning when they came here. Um, precautions that you need to take when you, when, as an individual. Um, it goes back to the atomic structure, guys, when it came to lightning. So we're going to talk about the atomic structure and how the whole lightning um, works. So that's kind of the, the high school science that we're going to talk about. Uh, yeah. Nick, do you remember the atom? How the atom is made out of, uh, my friends, the neutrons and protons. And I don't remember to draw that one for you guys. There is really, really beautiful... Uh, the nucleus is sitting right in the middle here and right around there. There is electrons swimming and dancing. And when one of them leave orbits, that will get you the whole conductivity business. That's what this talks about, it, guys. Um, that's, as I said, high school uh, science. The nucleus is positively charged because of Mr. Uh, Brotons there. Um, negatively charges. Um, the surrounding, these are dancing electrons. Really, I know... Uh, First, you don't like the book that we had in the first quarter, but first quarter book has really nice atomic um, um, structure and how it's related to the electrical the electrical Delmar industry, the Delmar book. I thought it really nice pictures. So you knock one of these electrons out of, out of orbit, you get yourself a flow of energy, flow of energy. Okay, the surrounded electrons, they're negatively charged. So you have positively charged nucleus, negatively charged electrons. They have the force between them to maintain the equilibrium that you and I are made of. Some of us are made of this equilibrium. Um, okay, so how does the whole science of electricity go? Again, this is high school science, guys. Uh, dislodge one of these babies, basically, and knock him out of order in the orbit, and you get yourself a flow of energy. I don't know how, who, who was there to see that this happening. They do them in the lab now, they bust them. Um, what they do, the whole idea, guys, it's coming down into two, two things. They call it positive ion and negative ions. If you lose an electron, if you lose an electron, you are, um, that will, uh, loses an electron, you are negatively charged. If you gain an electron, that means that gains an electron is positively charged. Um, so, Negatively ions, atoms that gains an electron versus atoms that leaves, leaves, uh, loses an electron. This guy's going down into the, the, the natural phenomena that called ionization of air. The ionized, you, you put, this is really cool. You appreciate this one if you do high voltage too. If you guys put, I read it in a book about high voltage, Chris. You take a piece of wood, 
piece of wood, right? It's non-conductive. You, you put in one end of this piece of wood a, a wire, on the other end another wire, and start raising the voltage across this piece of wood. Up, up, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand. At a certain, at a certain point, when you reach in thousands of volts, you can change that piece of wood into conductive, and it will arc. So that's because you put so much pressure across the atom, atoms of these piece of wood that you ionize it basically, or you make it conductive. You make it conductive, and that's the whole phenomena of ionization in the air. What you're going to see the the picture that they do. They have positively charged, uh, um, positively charged cloud. So negatively charged cloud, positively charged earth with high potential between them. That high potential forces the air to be ionized. Who cares? When you ionize the air, it becomes conductive. So it takes that big fat bulk of, uh, of electricity from the negatively charged cloud into the positively charged earth or vice versa and dump that energy directly into the ground. That's what they're talking about here. Um, the high school science. Yes, sir. Do they measure ionization? You know, like how far you can push it? <clears throat> what, like you said, how many volts? And oh, do they do that with metal? And I, I'm, a, I'm not, not with the lightning. I'm not really expert in lightning, but in lo, low voltage, yes, they rate uh, them based on uh, B uh, pulse, uh, basic impulse level. This term, and I, I'm mixing things here. This term is very, very powerful in a high voltage press. When they put, you, you can see the towers, and the, light, the reason why I use high voltage because high voltage is as close to, as you can get to lightning. Lightning is a high voltage. And it, it shoots the arc right into. So when you put the towers, right at the top of the tower, you have the insulation, right? And on top of the insulation, you have the wire. The size of the insulation and the skirts, they call them skirts that they put on the insulation, has a, they size them in something called BIL, which is basic impulse level. That basic impulse level is a multiplier of the voltage. So if your voltage system is 13A, you can have the M, the multiplier 10. So 10 times 13, that will give you 138. Meaning you can have a lightning hit the transmission line up to a voltage of 130, 138 volt before this insulation, this insulation here uh, that's sitting on the top of the pole um, turn into a, a conductive material and conduct the electricity down to the pole. So anyway, this is similar to, in terms of the power, again, my expertise in the power, uh, very similar. This is as close as you can get to the BIL of electrical system. And if, if you guys do high voltage, you'll find every single equipment, Chris, that we use outside has a BIL level in it, in the high voltage. Why? Because that, based on the BIL level, it can handle this amount of lightning volt or this amount of lightning volt. Um, or not just lightning, they do also transmission line, switching transmission line and so forth. Okay, so that's basically the whole um, um, science behind it. There's a couple of things, guys, a quick reminder. Uh, the charges um, attract and rebuild. Alike charges rebuild. Um, different char the, the, non alike charges will, um, will um, attract each other's. And then they define Mr. Column for you. Mr. Column is the quantity. Because, guys, uh, lightning is not a current. There's two different things. You can transmit power in two different ways. The civilized way of transmitting power, I call it the civilized way, is by current. Right? You can shoot a current in a conductor and control shooting of current through a voltage, put voltage, and put wires across that voltage into a load, and you shoot that power as a current. That's a civilized way. The non-so-civilized way is you can shoot the energy as a charge. That's what lightning is. It's the same thing, the same outcome, is you take a big chunk of energy that much and you burn it right here. Either you burn a civilized way by a current, which we use, or you can burn it through lightning or other applications of charges. I call it the non-civilized when it comes to, uh, to, to uh, the lightning. So here's how they, they define it, guys. The quantity of charge that... Um, that when placed one meter away from a light charge reveals that amount of Newton. Did you guys remember that Newton? You didn't do any science, huh? With Newtons and meters and all this good stuff. Um, there is, um, I hate to go to the science. That reminds me when I was in, in, in college. There's, 
if you put two charges alike, we did a lot of them when, when I was in college, Chris, like positive, negative, you can find the force that these charges are going to pull each other's, um, pull them away, pull away from each other or pull to where, towards each other. And that force is, is um, proportionally, Chris, it's proportion, what do you call it? It's um, proportional to the charge itself, how much charge we have in columns. Um, directly proportional to the charge and inversely proportional to the distance between them. For you guys, you are not scientists, so you don't want to know a whole lot about this one. So a couple of things that they define is the is the column charge, but for us, electrically speaking, uh, a lot of people, not a whole lot to it. Uh, joule is the work. Look at this one. The work done, that's now energy. Energy released by one newton, Mr. Newton over one meter. So one Newton over one meter gets you the work. So my work equals Mr. Force multiplied by Miss Distance. And these are quantities and anybody have done, did you guys do science with Newton? We don't, when you were in high school or here, done with you? Mr. Newton. And um, so anyway, so the work, then the volt, the potential energy um, charge gains when one uh, joule of work um, work is done on one column of charge. One column of charge. Really, in terms of electrical, not a whole lot of application for it for us. Is it Coulomb? Coulomb. I think it's Coulomb. I don't take by my my pronunciation. I'm the worst at these pronunciations. So the charge, the Coulomb for the charge, the joule for the work, and Mr. Newton for the force. Um, the number of calculus, Isaac Newton came up for calculus to explain gravity. And he was tortured to do that, and he was given thanks to Newton for that. I, uh, you don't even start me. I, I'm i I'm one, Chris, I enjoyed calc myself. So at the, at, I'm the one of the guys who enjoyed Newton so much. So the last one to talk about the <laughs> one. So uh, take this. So, because of all this, guys, now you put uh, the smarter than Chad divided the sky into all these three locations. You guys read them and say whatever you say. My my point is, look at the potential between these two locations. So there is a high potential. Every time you have a high potential, every time you have a high voltage or a voltage between two points, if you have a conductive uh, object between the two points, you're going to have a flow of energy going to it, either as a charge or as a current. So you have a potential right here. If you if you ionize the air, and I'm not getting an expert and enough, you can have a flow of energy going from one point to another point. So that's a couple of things. Um, this is my favorite. I don't know if you guys have seen that one. If you're walking, minding your own business, just walking, actually minding your own business, and Mother Earth get lightning hit the ground where you are, you're not doing anything. This is very powerful, guys, because if you do high voltage very similar to the high voltage. All what you're doing, minding your own golfing or anything, the lightning hit the ground right next to you. There's something called step voltage. Step voltage that's gonna develop in the ground that will burn you by not touching anything. It's just your leg here, uh, here's Chad. Or well, it's just to press because press golfs all the time. So Chad is minding his own business with a cup of pop right in his hand here. And lightning hit that ground Okay, so now here's the voltage between Mr. Kirby here, 200 and 4, 260 or 40, 260 volt here. Now, what do you think if you have two legs tied to 260, right? What do you think is going to happen? You have a conductive object between two, between a voltage. You're going to have a current. So the current is going to go through Mr. Kirby's, oops, that area and back down here. So you could be electrocuted because of that. This concept, Chris, believe it or not, is very typical of the high voltage. You walk into a substation right now, any high voltage substation, say, uh, let's just say 600,000 volt. You walk into a 600,000 volt substation, or 500, probably more, more like it. So 500,000 volt substation. And right while you're standing in a substation, a ground fault happens into one of these switch gear equipment. It has to be a ground fault. If there's no ground fault, nothing will happen to you. Ground fault happened. 
There will be a voltage exactly like in lightning develop between your legs. They call it a step voltage that enough to burn you without touching anything. And if you're like Chad and like to touch things and there's a piece of equipment here and you're, you're handing it, they call this is a touch voltage. There's a voltage between this switch gear equipment and Chad's leg. That voltage could be as high as a thousand volt. Um, a thousand volt. Who cares? Oops. A thousand volt. Who cares? It will burn you. So I don't want to talk about lightning, but this is typical if you, typical for the high voltage systems. Here. Every time the step voltage, they call it step voltage, as in a, a voltage between your steps, and touch voltage, as in the voltage when you touch an object between your hand and one of your legs, or your hand and the other hand. Anyway, so it's, remember that voltage that developed, but you have to have a charge, or you have to have a short sort of ground fault in our system. Is there a standard distance factor they use on the Oh, and I don't know lightning, but in high voltage, they have they do a lot of things to solve this problem. One of the major things, Chris, you do if you went to a major substation, you find rocks. Have you guys ever yeah. been there? You have rocks there. Have you ever wondered that why they do rocks? They do the grounding mesh right underneath, and then they put a, probably a foot or six inches worth, at least a foot worth of rocks right to the top of it. So when you're standing there, you're standing insulated from the ground. Rocks are better insulation than dirt. So they put the rocks to get you fully insulated just to protect you from step voltage. So they have, uh, but you're still grounded right underneath you. The whole substation is grounded, but you're isolated from the ground. So um, Chris, that's what uh, my friend Levi, when he came here, negatively charged, positively charged object, you have enough pressure between them. You ionize the air. When you ionize the air, you, you make it conductive. And here's a big, big chunk of energy dumped from the sky into the earth. Go capture it, store it, sell it. You're the richest man on earth. They said that when you take your knife and the rock and take the rock, they said that there's not enough energy. There's not enough. You try to harness it into a capacitor. Not enough energy in it? I guess it's enough energy for like a tank of a gallon of gas. Yeah. But if you capture, I read this one and I'm an expert. You capture, like in Florida, they were saying, if you capture all these, and they're trying, they're trying to get into storing well, energy. Storing is a problem. Yeah. This, yeah, that's why solar is so, the fuel is so full. It gets people to figure out a way to store, store the energy generated. You store in a in a uh, economical way, yeah. without filling the whole building with batteries and maintaining the batteries is big deal. Okay. Um, it's just talks about guys the charges charges can go from cloud to cloud cloud to earth to earth to cloud so all these charge discharge uh, strikes um, takes the low impedance like my friend says between all these uh, moving on um, National Center for Health Statistics here's 250 people lose their life in the US according to these guys here's how much money we lose because of lightning so who cares go put a lightning protection for your building they're trying to convince us to put a lightning protection um, so those are the injured ones, and the killed one at 150. Okay, so the goal, here's where we, I want you guys to wake up if you're sleeping now. The goal of lightning protection, when you do lightning protection for your building, your goal is to have low impedance path to the ground, like uh, Levi when he came here. If you were to hit, it's not going to protect you from the hit, but if you are to get hit, you want that huge amount of energy to go from the top of your building so fast, so easy, through a, a conductive channel, channel that energy away from your objects, electrical objects, mechanical objects, directly to Mother Earth and burn that corner in Mother Earth. So that huge energy, you just want to basically channel it away from your building into the Earth as fast, as easy. That's what you guys are doing with us when you put all these lightning rods and every 100 feet you take a big, fat lightning conductor to Mother Earth. What you're doing, you're giving it an interstate, um, lightning interstate to go to take it down to Mother Earth versus going through the structure of your building and burn that structure. So that's, uh, that's the whole idea of lightning. So any comments, guys, any questions other than the science part of it? Anybody want to comment? I don't want to get into the science, but the whole idea, guys, you have a potential, very high potential between two charges. You ionize the air. The air becomes conductive. It channels all this energy from one location to another.
cloud to earth or earth to cloud or cloud to cloud as a as a lightning master sorry If I remember right, typically you're going to go from the, the negative to the positive. So whichever, at that moment, if the earth is negatively charged, the cloud is positively charged, energy goes this way. Most of the time goes that way, I think. Um, so you're going to transfer that negative charge into the positively charged object. That's typically what, what happens. Um, master label guys, those guys are, I don't know if you remember, uh, lightning. Um, Thompson Lightning gave us tons of information about those guys. Here's what they do. They walk into a place, they do the design for you, and also they check your installation, they give you a label, they say, yep, you are fully protected by Lightning. So a lot of people talk about master, master label that you want to put in the building. We got tons of information from Lightning guys, Thompson Lightning, look at the requirement that you need to do to get this um, installation requirement. We have, I'm not going to even go there, there's so many details that you can almost go install the whole system based on the bins of the cables and a bunch of other things so keep this in mind um a couple of people endorse it notoriously you outsource and lightning protection institute you guys have tons of material from lightning matters from this institute too in the front of you the whole idea of lightning protection is the low impedance to ground to channel this amount of a huge energy away from my electrical and mechanical system and my structure directly into Mother Earth to a low impedance path. So that's, uh, that's the whole idea of get, getting you, getting the lightning um, system. Okay, now you guys can wake up, the ones who are sleeping. Rob, are you? Uh, this is what, what I want you guys, what you guys putting putting on our building. Lightning protection made out of three major things. And I'm sure you guys by now you already installed them first, I have no doubt. Number one is lighting lightning terminal. This baby can go from 10 inches all to all the way to 36 inches. Not feet, chair. 10 inches to 36 inches. Yours guys are going to specify as 12 inch rods. These are the rods. These are uh, uh, the air terminals. The first point of defense that's going to sense the discharge, take the huge energy down to Mother Earth. Cool. So that's uh, the first, the first part. And here's my the top of my building. And you guys, notorious, the famous, you put them on the top of, of your building here, right? Every 20 feet on center, and you tie them, bam, 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 tie them all, right? And you went to Mother Earth from every 100 feet, right? That's what you did there with us. So that's the first thing is the lightning. So that's number one, Chris. That's number one here. Number two is the lightning conductor. That's the cable here. This is recommendation for this cable. They're telling you 59K. Uh, this will be 59KCM. KCM, Chad. Um, KCM, copper, CU, or aluminum, Chris. What's the recommendation for aluminum? Uh, 98.5. 98.5 kcm so what i want you guys to indicate these in your drawings that's why i'm writing them somehow somewhere keep what a note let's use copper pick one of them copper and use the conductor just a keynote right next to the conductor conductor minimum of 59 kcm based on these recommendations so that's my conductor right it's a special conductor you guys have seen it a specially designed conductor oh. They can, but they don't recommend it. The institute recommend the specially designed, specially stranded wire. The act, suppose it, I don't know if it's Comer. I'm sure they have their own test that they ran on them. It well, works better. To be outdoors to start it. Yeah. Why can't I use number six stranded or number four stranded wire? I guess it will work. But the recommendation of those guys, like when the lightning. Thompson Lightning guys were here. They always recommend a, a cable that's called Lightning Cable. Lightning Cable. Okay, ground uh, connection. Number three, guys, is the ground connection. When you get into the ground connection right here, you need at least 10 feet of at an inch and an inch and a half, uh, a half an inch, a half an inch rod, cover ground rod into the ground minimum. These are minimum. So. 10 foot, half an inch rod, that's based on the recommendation that you can tie this cable to. So these are basically, here's your lightning system. 
any comments, any questions. That's what you guys are going to be doing with us. So what I want you, Chris, is you specify, please, if you guys are uh, sleeping now, please wake up here. I want you to specify the size of the rod, the size, uh, the grounding rod uh, connection. I want to specify also the lightning terminal or the air terminal as well as the cable. That's all. On the Revit drone when you guys do it. On the Revit drone. Any question guys about this? That's about it. And all these recommendations. A couple of things, Chris. Um, between the rods, we know that you place them at 20, 20 feet, no more than 20 feet on center. You have to be within two feet of the edge. Um, if they're in the middle, within 50 feet in, inside, in the middle of the building, right in here, uh, within 50 feet. Um, what else? Um, every 100 feet, you drop and you go to Mother Earth, the ground rod. What else? Do These are the major, major design parts. Um, you always bend with curves because he was saying that the chart jumps um, and a bunch of other things. So any comments, guys, any questions? That's the design part I really want to, from this whole chapter here, just the design part. Our lightning, um, our air terminal is going to be a minimum of 10 inches, 12 inches typical, um, and so forth. Okay, so this just talks about the terminals, guys. You've seen the terminals. They put them at the top. The highest portion, that's the one that's going to hit. You can have them uh, solid or tubular, uh, copper or aluminum. Uh, and we looked at a couple of them. Um, sharp pointers, or you can have them dull for safety. You can have that little ball at the top of them for safety. Uh, at the, their job attracts lightning does not prevent the lightning that's the, the key point does not prevent the lightning it's not meant to prevent the lightning if it, it's meant if you are to get hit because of the atmosphere in your around your building is cooked just right enough to hit you you have the low impedance coming from to your building low impedance between the clouds and your building the lowest and you are to get hit you're going to get hit with that little um, terminal here and it will suck all the energy away from your electrical mechanical uh, equipment guys and your building comments questions but uh, I used to think in the past is they're supposed to diffuse it and discharge it it's not 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 meant to discharge that huge energy it's meant if you're get, to get hit it channels it away from your structure so you don't get damaged no so yes, okay. you're absolutely right. Yep. Air and to you, you know, absolutely. It channels energy. I always say it's all about energy, guys. All this energy coming as a charge, it channels it away from the, in the right way, channel it in the right way. Um, so it's, that's... It's like having a log, a service log, 40 miles up in the air that happens to be at 10 million volts, rather than 280 yes. volts. Yes. And you almost get like a ground fold directly. Oh, it's the same any, any other type of it's just such a massive size. Absolute massive energy for a short amount of time. Thanks, God. Air terminals, a couple of things, guys, about we talked about the sizes that they, they recommend them. Minimum to maximum. Uh, distribution away from the perimeter, actually. Uh, 20 feet on center and two feet from the edge of these systems. And we went through that one, guys. In the center of the building. They put them 50 on center. Everybody remember these guys' rules from lightning when they came? Um, they put them at the top of the chimneys if we have chimneys and the highest object. In our case, we guys have uh, rooftop units, not rooftop units. We have a uh, cooling tower. We are supposed to put them at the at, at four corners of a cooling tower. We had our cooling tower here, press, and I asked you guys to put one here and one here and one here and one here. And... Sometimes they use the frame of a cooling tower as a conductive object. Sometimes they tie them together, uh, move them, and they take, and here's my main lightning cable coming, and you take, tie it here from one side and another side. You always have to have two paths for major equipment. So that's my uh, cooling tower. If you have an exhaust fan, exhaust fan, what we ask guys, based on the recommendation of the smarter than your friend Chad, is to take one conductor and tie it, only one, because it's a smaller object. Bigger objects, two paths. Can you guys see that? Little object, one path. Any question? Tell my friend. I know it's Friday, but the, the topic is not as hard, guys, as, uh, as oil circuit breakers. 
so exciting, huh? So, because of um, the slubby people whom I'm going to pick on, William, because William keeps dancing around on the rope and we don't want him to spear himself here, the smarter than Chad came up with a safety um, ball at the top where you can put it there, part of the design, so it doesn't spear people. And remember what they also came when they came, guys, some of these also, yeah, they bend, they made for safety. Because, yeah, you protect your building from lightning, but you speared uh, somebody's tummy and now uh, he's suing you, he died, or his family suing you for this amount of money. So we create, we solve a problem to create another sometimes. So just be aware of that one. That's your 10 inches to 36 inches. Typically 10 to 12 inches above the equipment. Lightning conductor, that's going to channel all this energy directly away from the objects. Cover or aluminum. Copper or aluminum conductor, specially designed wire, guys. Can I use copper conductors? Yep, but to get you master label, you have to use specially designed cables. Then they can handle the energy. It ties the all the terminals to Mother Earth. Ground rod. Ground rods, guys, we talked about the 10 feet. Uh, you need typically, um, you, you bury them a foot below the grave for the ground rod, typically 10 feet at an inch and a half uh, CU copper ground rod in the ground. Uh, you can use other grounding electrode system first if you have a water pipe other than gas using an underground metal object like water pipes and so forth to tie them. And oh by the way you guys are electrical designers so what do we do if we have multiple grounding electrode system in any area? You tie them together. So you're supposed to tie the grounding electrode system um, the lightning grounding electrode system, the electrical grounding electrode system, and the low voltage grounding electrode system, if they are three separate ones, you have to tie them together. They can't be the same one. If they're separate three, if they're separate guys, most of the engineers guys design them as one. When we went to Boston Scientific, I don't know if you heard the guy here when he was saying, the building that we were in, they have a, a ground ring around the whole building a ground ring with 500 kcm did you see the cover 500 kcm ground ring tie all the structural beams to it and i'm sure if they, i don't know if they have lightning if they have lightning they use it also for to tie their lightning system and the low voltage the coaxial the shield of the coaxial safety rules if it's lightning outside there's a bunch of them here guys i'm not going to read them do and do not if you see if it's lightning outside phil get outside that's what they say and check if the lightning is coming. <laughs> I'm just kidding here. You're supposed to face lightning to get inside. Tell that to my son. Um, so a couple of rules <laughs> um, that you have to, these are just safety rules and so forth. From of course the uh, Department of Commerce, they're great that we guys are putting these rules. And um, so I think he said the same thing. If somebody's get to hit by lightning, please go help them. They're not, they're not hot. They are not um, electrified, meaning if you touch them, you're not going to get electrocuted. The lightning, unlike electrical, uh, Ashley, electrical charge, electrical electrocution, if you grab on a wire and you're not disconnected and I come and touch you, I am part of the circuit now and you and I are joining heaven together. Um, lightning can very short, huge amount of energy, very short. So bam and done. <laughs> the circuit breaker is with the Lord. For the electrical system, the circuit breaker is right there. It might not wake up, but for lightning guys, it doesn't need the circuit breaker, right? The Lord will just bam one time and off. It's unlike, again, electrocution keeps going forever if you have the right impedance. Um, so do CPR to save the people. And there's a couple of rules, Chris, if you save me from reading all of them, please, how, what to do and what not to do in terms of lightning. That's you guys did that on the... Uh, when we were in grade school, probably. No, where a person through to be killed by lightning can often be revived by CPR. You are supposed to give a CPR for people. And no mouth-to-mouth -mouth connection. You don't have to do that. Uh, <laughs> Um, a lot of lot of rules, guys. Really interesting. They say do not use if you, there's lightning. You do not use wired phones. And remember that these are rules. I'm sure we all grew up with them. Do not use wired phones. Uh, don't be outside. And and you guys read them on your own. I'm not going to go through all of them. Any questions? 
any questions, any comments. Really, my intention fell from the whole class is these, these three. If you guys know how to size them, throw them in the building. 20, 20 feet on center, two feet, no more than two feet away from the edge of the building. Every 100 feet, we go down to the ground to tighten the ground rod. Ground rods is 10 feet minimum length, uh, a half an inch um, or more minimum, half an inch copper uh, diameter. What else uh, did we, inside the building, 50 feet on center. Um, the cover sizes, what was it? 50, it was 59 copper and 98.5 aluminum. The size of the wire. Two paths for major equipment. When we do the building, they always emphasize two paths. Right? They want the energy to, to be channeled in multiple locations, multiple ways. Any question? Anybody excited? No, no excitement about lightning? Have you known anyone to get struck by lightning? No. I've seen places got, got struck. When you put, for us electrically, guys, you have, you have to maintain a distance. Yes, what was it? Um, when you put your lightning cable, uh, you have to maintain a distance of six inches away from the lightning cable. So if you have a lightning cable going this way and a, light, a lighting conductor and an electrical cable going that way, you have to maintain a six inch uh, inside the building. Outside the building, six feet, I believe, um, location. Um, so you have to maintain that energy. Another example, also electrically speaking, Chris, um, the shaft for a great place to do a lightning uh, sh shaft for an elevator. There's metal objects in the elevator. Can I use the shaft, the metal part of the shaft of an elevator as a lightning, um, a grounding electrode conductor going to the ground? No, you're not supposed to do that. You're not supposed to even put the lightning cable inside the shaft of an elevator. So there's a lot of rules that you can't put your, sh your lightning cable cannot get into an inside the shaft of the elevator. It has to go somewhere else. So there's a few rules that you that related directly to the electrical uh, system. Any comments, any questions? Okay, that's what I have. Let's, uh, let's have guys five minutes and then I have one more for you. Thank you.